start with the uh, official part of the presentation and I'd like to start a little one minute clip movie which is pretty uh, uh, complex because the audience is coming from one laptop and the image from the other. So here we go. I will try. Dit is Eduard. Een kleine man met een grote snor. En deze man is verantwoordelijk voor het hele draadloze netwerk van Fontis. Dus als je wifi een keer langzaam is, vergeet dan niet... Het is een heel groot netwerk en er is maar één kleine man. Met een grote snor. All right. Um, as you can see, we have a pretty large virus network at Fontes University. And for years we have been trying to enhance the performance of the network by using the wireless data. Where are people logging in? How many people are logging in? And where are the hotspots? And we were getting better at it because the data of companies like Juniper and Cisco was getting better. Was getting better. But do you think that our users cared? No, they didn't care. The only time they care about AdWords, the little man with the big moustache, is when the network is down or when things are not working. I think you can relate to that. The only time they care about you, the IT department, is when things are not working. Uh, and we were thinking, this cannot be all. This can, there has to be more, there has to be more to life. And so we were inspired by the big data movement and we took a hard look at our data again. And then we realized that our data, the wireless data, was telling a story. A story not about the wireless network, but about Fontes University. We realized that it was a story that needed to be told. We realized that we were a diamond mine, a diamond mine of wireless data. And the only thing we needed was a golden pick to mine the diamonds. So we turned to the most intelligent people in our organization, <coughs> our students. And we presented them with all the data in the wireless network and we asked them, look at this data. What can you do with it? So they started to build. And the first thing they built were visualizations. Things like this. They built something, it was called the Fontes Garden. Uh, the bees are the teachers by the hundreds, the butterflies are the students by the thousands. <laughs> and so you could immediately see how busy it was at Fontes. People like this. People thought, oh, that's nice. They also understood more that it's a really large network and it's hard to, to manage it. But they were also starting to ask, or ask us questions because they realized that we have all these data. So they were saying things like, all right, Grants, uh, I have implemented a new policy to schedule lessons on Friday afternoon till five o'clock. Is it working? And then we took a long, hard look at the garden and we saw no bees or butterflies whatsoever. So, so they, they, they started uh, to understand that we have all these data. And we urged our students to be more uh, creative. Here, maybe, maybe it works on me. So they started building uh, all kinds of infographics based on the um, uh, wireless data. Uh, infographics like this, this is the one that was um, uh, pretending how, ma how many pizzas can you nuke based on the wireless radiation of a single moment based on the number of concurrent connections. People were liking this. Fun infographics, we were uh, presenting them on screens everywhere, but we said to our students, you can do more. So they started to compare groups. And of course these people were a little bit IT students, a little bit nerdy people. So the first thing they compared was Apple versus Windows. And Apple uh, was, uh, was on the rise at Fontes, of course, and Windows 
on the decline. Then they started comparing iOS versus Android. You see Android was killing iOS. But then we asked that in this virus data, you can also see if someone is a boy or a girl. So maybe you can compare the boys to the girls. And who do you think are more attractive? Oh. Who do you think are more attractive? Girls. Uh, active. I mean active. Sorry. It's, uh, it's a problem with the language. Um, who, do you, who do you think are more active? Girls. Girls. Of course. Yes. Teachers versus students. Who do you think are more active? Students. Of course, they, they arrive earlier and they leave later. Hipsters being students from communication and design versus students from IT and engineering. Nerds? Wrong! It's hipsters. And people were, we were presenting these kinds of infographics and people really liking it because they, they thought it was fun. So our effort, the little man with the big moustache, upgraded himself from someone who uh, is only visible when things don't work to someone who's part of the fun. So we were liking this. But then we took it a little bit farther. We implemented a new uh, wireless network, so you could also uh, exactly determine where someone was, and it was easier to program against the database. So we said to our students, a new batch of students, what can you build now? The first thing they did was build a smoke detector. We have 29 buildings, but now you could always see how many people were smoking at a certain moment. And you could also see how many hours went up in smoke every day at Columbus University. And this, these are not real figures because it's more. Uh, you could also see where is my device. If you lost your device, uh, say you lost your iPhone, you know it's in the building, but where is it? You could exactly determine, uh, you could log in and exactly see where your device was. Mostly it was next to the toilet wall because it slipped out of your pocket. Uh, also, we built an absent uh, present um, application that we displayed on the screens. So when a teacher walks in the building, automatically his picture goes from absent to present. And when he leaves, it's the other way around. Uh, I don't know if teachers like it, but we are technical people and we thought, but this is nice. And some students built an application called Squirrel. And in the application, you can uh, fill out, uh, I want to find a student that does the same course as I do and then you can determine if he's somewhere in the building. Students have to uh, opt in for that, and it's experimental, but it's something we like. But the killer app was this one. It was an Atari-like interface in which you could exactly, uh, it was measuring how many yards you were moving around in the building. You get points for yards, and you get bonus points for stats. And then the people that were moving around uh, the most, that people uh, were displayed in this Atari uh, interface uh, as number one, two, three, four, five. This was a very useless app. <laughs> totally senseless. And so it immediately was a big, big success. <laughs> people really liked this. All the more serious students were thinking, well, maybe we can use this concept for something <coughs> with flex working. Let's say you have a new flex work concept and you want people to work something like this. A little bit here in your um, say the silent zone, a bit in the mix zone, a bit in the concentration zone, a bit in the student zone. It has to look, this heat map has to look like this. But then in reality, we're going to follow this person and it looks like this. See the, the little red dot is his cubicle and this very little red dot is anybody at, at, at ID? The coffee machine, yeah, right. <laughs> so we were thinking maybe we can use data like this to start an awareness campaign for our uh, uh, flex work uh, projects. Then we started to use information from other data sources, for example, our uh, schedule. So we could determine through the schedule how many hours we expected the student to be on school, say 20 hours. And then we could see, based on the wireless network, how many hours he really was in school. And then we could say, well, you, we expected you for 20 hours, you were only here 15, you are lazy, or you are a workhorse. And, you could, and people, students, like this, they had it on their own app, and then they used it to uh, have conversations about it with their student counselors. And now Edward 
was upgraded from someone you only see when things are not working to someone who was part of the fun, and now he's someone who's also trying to uh, improve the educational process. And then we were thinking the most important uh, task of IT, or one of the most important tasks of, of IT, is make the life of a teacher lighter. Find ways to save time for teachers. So we were thinking, can we use a wireless way to do that? So what we built was an automatic attendance system. If you enter the classroom, <coughs> the system will know, based on your wireless uh, information, you can check in or not, it will know you are there. Not because you have checked in, because, but because you are really there. So this is something that, that's working, and a teacher can check, check it by pictures. And then the, the best app we are trying now, this one, we have a lot of buildings with a uh, hundred or more uh, project uh, rooms, and there's all, always a lot of problem reserving those rooms. Because uh, the rooms are always reserved, but when you walk around in the building, there's no one in the rooms. So the, the, re the virtual reality of reserva reservation is different than the real reality. So we were thinking, can we show the real reality? Based on the wireless data, we can see if someone is in a room or he isn't. So, for example, if you are in the hall looking on the screens, you can see room 318 is free, and you just go there and sit there. Or if you're someone like uh, my friend Wu, <coughs> who has problems uh, uh, peeing when there's someone next to him, you can see, oh, it's totally free. <laughs> that <was a> <laughs> <laughs> this one, we are piloting this one in uh, a few big buildings uh, within Fontes University. And it's working at the moment very, very good. But we are waiting to see how our students will go through this system. But maybe it's going to work. But anyways, even... I think this, this won't click anymore. No. It won't work anymore. And it was even more. <laughs> but that's going to be told by Google. Okay, thank you.